Now at first glance you might think that building a countertop and installing it is just like building a table without any legs. The reality is there's a couple more steps to that and I really want to highlight those throughout this video. For this project we're using six quarter walnut and six quarter meaning that it's at inch and a half and this wood was fairly rough so I had to put everything through the process of planing it down and getting it dimensionally all to the same size. Now I was skip planing my boards just because my joiner is not wide enough. These boards didn't have any kind of a bow or anything in them so it was actually okay just to process them this way. And one thing I learned in this video, or I guess in making this tabletop, was the dust shoe from my planer was broken. After a quick sweep and going back to make sure everything was dimensionally the same, I started marking my ins and outs so I knew which side of the fence I had to align my boards to on the joiner. Now the purpose of doing this is, if your fence isn't perfectly 90 degrees on your joiner, you actually, instead of compacting that error, equalize that error by splitting it between the two boards depending on which side is facing the fence. An example of this would be taking two parallelograms and just sliding them together. Even though they're both not at 90 degrees, they fit together perfectly. But if you compounded that, <laughs> they wouldn't fit together well at all. And I guess the proof is in the clamping? Because these joints were absolutely perfect. Before shutting down for the night, I do like to clamp my materials together. I did come back the next day and just skip plane once again, just to make sure that there wasn't any movement in the boards. And the reality was this sat in my shop for so long, there wasn't any movement at all. A panel glue up like this for sure does not need dominoes, but because of who it was that I was building this for, and because of the room that I know it was in, I want to make sure that there is as little chance of seasonal movement as possible. So for me, adding the dominoes just gives that extra layer of security, so I know that I'm not going to have to come back in a year and have to rip it out and redo everything. Of course, being screwed down and being set on a flat surface will help with this, but the tool is there, so why not? I glued up the panel with Type Bond 3, which I have in this rolling brush that's made by Rockler. This was a fairly straightforward glue up. The process didn't take very long to do, and my seams were absolutely perfect. With a bit of climbing pressure, I had a nice even bead of glue that was squeezing out, and I was able to let it sit and dry. So what do they say? Do what I do, not what I say? Or do what I say, not what I do? Either way, don't use good chisel to scrape glue. I had to do some sanding and then use some tuck tape to build a bit of a dam for the epoxy filling that had to happen on this wood. If you've gone back and watched videos that I've made where I've used walnut, you'll notice that I tend just to pick materials that match, as opposed to materials that are free of defects. For me, taking the extra time to do this kind of work, filling knot holes and even including sapwood, just adds more character to the piece. And you'll see that in a second, I'm just pouring some water on the piece just so I can get an idea of what the finish will look like. And I did send pictures of this to our friends just so they could see what their final countertop piece was going to look like. Also, by adding the water in this way, it makes the fibers of the wood stand up on end, so when you're going back to sand, it actually sands those out, so you get a lot smoother finished piece. Here I am a couple days later, and I'm ready to install the countertop, so if you haven't seen this before, I use a bit of a card trick to make sure that I have enough spacing on all sides of the workpiece. And I've just taken four playing cards, taped them together, and taped them strategically on both sides, because you can see here, the walls are not straight. So imagine if I was just to cut a perfectly square countertop to go into this space. There maybe would be a gap at the front and back corner, and no amount of caulking would make it actually look as true as it could be, compared to making a template like what you see me doing right here. And these are just first strips that I'm literally just hot gluing together in place to fit the exact shape of the corner. Now there's two huge bonuses to doing it this way. Number one, I have a template that's the exact size of that alcove, and I'm able to take that back to the shop and cut my countertop exactly to the right size. The second thing is, I don't have to bring the countertop and a bunch more tools to their condo and make a bunch of sawdust and do a bunch of work to make sure the countertop fits just right. The template with how I've marked it out and how I've marked out the overhangs is absolutely perfect and you'll see here just how it fits once we get it back to their condo. Now with the template in hand, I was able to start cutting out the exact size of the countertop. 
I was very careful to make sure that my back edge was still my back edge, and the way I lined everything up was all off this reference surface. And this angle actually shows you really well how far out the wall was compared to what a square would be. So ironically, the shape of this was a parallelogram, and I switched to my white chalk pencil just to make sure that I was marking everything in a way on the walnut that I could actually see it as opposed to just a pencil line which doesn't show up as well against the walnut. So I've actually made it this far in this project without having to take any major turns and uh, as I was marking out what my angles were for the sides I realized that to cut this to the depth that I need, which is about 17 and 7 eighths, uh, it would actually only leave about a two inch strip on the front side or on the back side, which I don't think will look very good. Uh, the seams are blending really well, but I, I'd like to keep it a little bit more even. So I'm gonna take a little bit off the front and the back so the actual piece doesn't look disproportionate if you can, for whatever reason, see the seams in between the boards. With my width cut down, I went back and actually used the template again to redraw exactly what those angles were supposed to be off that reference surface of the back edge. This got me to the point of being able to sand. And I've been kicking myself for not doing this earlier, but I have started drawing on wood before sanding just to make sure I'm hitting all the high and low spots as I'm going through the grits. To ease the front edge, I just used an eighth inch round over. This is a bit from Bits and Bits. I'll put a link below if you wanna check it out, but it just leaves a really nice, subtle rounded profile. No surprise, the knot did actually open up just a little bit, so I used a bit of thin CA glue just to fill those hairline cracks, and this is just a clear CA glue, and hit it with the activator just to make it a little bit faster in the drying process. The more I do countertops, tabletops, or panel glue-ups like this, the better they get. And it's all the little tricks, like making sure that I'm doing the in and out trick on the joiner, making sure I'm skip planing on my new material, making sure that I'm letting it sit and acclimate before going to its final dimension. All these little things make the finishing, make the actual finish piece just that much better. This countertop isn't gonna see a lot of traffic because of where it is. So I did just opt to go with a hard wax finish. And I think this helps demonstrate right here just why I use the template. You can see how far it's out from front to back. And so you're always going to be better off to make your piece fit to the space as opposed to just making a perfectly square piece. Now, no project in my shop is complete without making at least a couple mistakes or forgetting something. And in this case, I totally forgot that I needed to add ports to the back so they'd be able to sneak power cords up through the cabinet to the countertop. Now this went okay, but I think the reason it went as well as it did was because I took the extra time to lay down the green tape and make sure that I was as careful as I could be while marking out where this hole was. This actually also became the template for where the holes would be when we drilled out, oh she was impressed, where we drilled out the holes in the back of the cabinet. I guess it sounds pretty extra when I say that I used a chunk of walnut as a template. Anyways, I just marked my holes, moved the countertop out of the way, and finished drilling through the back of the cabinet. And by the way folks, just as the world is not flat, seasonal wood movement is a real thing, so I elongated the screw holes that I would use to attach the countertop down to the cabinet. And you might be able to tell here that I'm using washers on the screws just to give a little bit more surface area. This is just particle board that it's being attached to, so I want to make sure that it had as much of a bite into the material as possible. With the countertop secured, I started caulking all the edges, and I wanted to make sure to have as clean of a seam as possible. So that's why you see me putting down this green painter's tape. Having this kind of as a top and bottom will prevent a mess, but it also leaves a really, really, really clean seam between the countertop and the wall. This caulking isn't anything special. It's just basic white silicone caulking. And with a decent bead of it in place, you can see what I mean about just the advantage of having that green tape there. It puts an absolutely perfect seam between the material and the wall, and any of the excess just comes right off with the tape in probably the most satisfying way possible. Now, if you've made it this far, I really want to say thanks for checking out this video. It really does help a lot if you hit subscribe or hit that thumbs up button on the video. I hope this helps others that are trying to do this kind of a countertop installation. 
This kind of work is by no means rocket science, but the reality is when you're doing any kind of client work, the steps you can do to make it as easy as possible on install day just makes life so much easier. I would hate to have to show up at a client's house with a bunch of extra tools to be able to put in a countertop, but taking that one extra trip to their house to build the template and to go through the steps as I have just made it that much easier. Guys, if you want to check out some of the other videos I've done, I'll link some below. And again, if you haven't hit that subscribe button, I would super appreciate it. We'll see you on the next video.